All right, hello everybody, and welcome to the Interactive Immersive HQ. For this video, I'm gonna go through how to create this cool uh, animated dithering effect with this image distortion as well. And we're gonna be able to do this in under 50 lines of GLSL, and really even less than that, because as you'll see, uh, several of those lines are going to be a pretty easy lookup table. So uh, let's just get started. I'm going to delete the shader. We're going to start with nothing but this movie file in, which you can get from the Touch Designer samples. And first, before I actually go through and begin creating uh, the GLSL shader, let's just talk for a second about what dithering actually is. Um, so dithering is essentially using some sort of algorithm to change some small pixels of an image in such a way that you're adding essentially grain or depth to the image. Often this appears as a crosshats pattern and it's a commonly used effect in a lot of motion graphics and visual design. So the dithering that we're gonna be going through today is known as ordered dithering or Bayer dithering. Um, and what we're gonna do is essentially use this matrix along with a handy little uh, lookup function to say for every pixel that we're dealing with, how are we gonna change that pixel's threshold slightly in a way that will produce the desired effect. So uh, we're gonna use this M8 matrix, which is an eight by eight matrix. And I guess just to mention, uh, we're gonna be implementing this as an index matrix, which is unscaled and then we'll be scaling it down and turning it into a bare matrix as we go through the code. So uh, with that said, let's move into actually working with this. So I'm just gonna drop down a GLSL top. I'm also going to edit this. I definitely recommend using an external text editor and I'm using cursor right now. So, oops, I'm using cursor right now, um, which is super handy if you haven't used it before. And so now we can, we can get going. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is simply have a vec2 called uv that I'll set equal to my vuv.st. Um, I'm going to also Turn off my autocomplete for a second so that we are not getting confused. Okay, so we can uncomment this uh, built-in templated line and delete this other line so that now we are just getting our pass-through image. Now, what we need to do is if I go back to, here we go, our order dithering, we need to implement this matrix first before we can do anything else. Um, I am not going to copy this right now. I've already implemented it. And so I'm going to just copy and paste this. Um, I will make sure that this code is attached so that you can just copy and paste this as well if you don't want to type in all of those different letters. So that is our matrix. And now what we need to do is define some function that's going to allow us to essentially quantize our domain and be able to then use that quantized domain as a lookup into this matrix. So it's pretty easy. We can have a function, we can call it float, maybe find closest X. And in this case, it will take in uh, a couple parameters. First, it will have an X and a Y parameter. And then we will have a float parameter, which is going to be basically where we are starting. So first we wanna check if X is less than eight. So this is very easy. We can just have a, another float that we call limit. We can use a ternary expression here. So that's X less than eight question mark. And now whatever we wanna do if this uh, evaluation is true goes next. And so that would be look up our value in the matrix. And so for that, we would do dither x, y. So that's looking in using x and y to index into this matrix. 
um, or I guess it's a matrix that we're inputting as a two-dimensional array in this case. And then we're going to wrap this whole thing in parentheses, add one to the end. And from here, I don't know if you remember, there's this one over 64. And so that is now what we are going to implement here. So we're gonna divide this by 64. And this is our, what we do if it's true. And if it's not true, we wanna just return zero. And so we can check our error here. Function is not return a value. Okay, we'll get there, just a second. And then the next step, our last step in this function, if our CO is less than the limit, what do we wanna do? Then we need to return zero, otherwise return one. So we can use another ternary expression here. CO less than limit, question mark. So now in this case, if it's true, we wanna return zero. And if not, we wanna return one. And that is our find closest X function. So now we can come down here and we can start to begin our dithering function. So first we can uh, calculate luminance of our function and we can do that by uh, loom coefficients we'll create a, th a vec3 loom coefficients and these are coefficients that you multiply a color by to convert it into a grayscale value or luminance and you can find these online uh, they're very common and i to be honest use this all the time and this is a very simple, so just VEC3. Uh, the first is 0.299, the second is 0.587, and the last is 0.114. So then we can create a float grayscale variable, and this will be using the dot product to dot product our color RGB against our luminance coefficient. And so this gives us the um, this gives us the grayscale value. Then we can use mix to mix our color dot RGB with our uh, grayscale dot RGB uh, vec3 uh, grayscale. And in this case, we'll mix using a U-mono uniform, which we can create up here. Uniform float U-mono. And in this case, now we can turn this from a grayscale to not grayscale very easily, just as like a little added bonus. Now we'll create another VEC2. We'll call this XY, XY. And this will be a VEC2 wrapped around GL underscore capital F capital C frag cord dot XY. So if VUV dot ST is between zero and one, GL frag cord dot XY is going to be uh, between zero and the resolution in the X and Y directions, e.g. 0, uh, say, 1280. And so this is what we can use to then uh, index into our dithering, or really our find closest function. So we can then have uh, an integer x, and we will do cast our xy.x as an integer, and then use the modulo operator to mod by eight. We'll do the same for y. Oops, mod eight. And so uh, modulo operations. And now that we have these modulo operations done, uh, I guess I can be more specific for eight by eight dithering. Now we can create one last variable and this will be our final color. And this will be a VEC3 
First, we're going to use our find closest x function. We're going to put in our x and y, and then our rgb.r value as that c0 threshold. Then we're going to use our find closest x function again. In this case, we're going to do x and y again, uh, but here rgb.g, and then you guessed it, we'll do our oops, find closest x function, and we'll put in our x and y again, but now we'll use our rgb.b. And so in this case, we're using basically a three pass dithering where we're grabbing the threshold from the RGB values of our input image. And that is going to lead to a pretty interesting result that I showed you at the beginning. Um, so let's see what our error is really quick. An undeclared identifier. Uh, yes, so this should not be RGB, my mistake. This should be color dot r g b uh, and now we can have a vec for out color equals vec for uh, final color comma one for the alpha and then we will output our out color and that is how we get this dithering Now, something that is interesting is if you change these coefficients, I don't know if you could see that, it was a little small, let's make it more drastic. By changing these coefficients, we can change the dithering and how it affects the image. So what I showed you was kind of the canonical uh, eight by eight matrix, but of course we're doing art here, so we can change these, um, we can change this scale, and there's a lot of different ways then that we can use the dithering to customize the effects. So here, by dividing it by four instead of 64, it's now a much darker image. And one other thing that I wanted to show you is by uh, translating the UV space a little bit, we can add some cool animation. So I'm gonna add one more uniform float U time. I will... Oops add this to my GLSL. And then what we're going to do very simply is we'll sample the color here. Um, and so before we sample that color, what we're going to do is actually take our uh, UV dot Y and just add a very simple sine wave that will be based on our UV dot X component. We will multiply that component by something like 10. Uh, we'll add our U time, that'll be the translation. And we'll multiply it by uh, 0.1. And nothing's happening now, but if I put in abs time dot seconds times 0.1. Uh, and then use our UV instead of UV dot XY as a lookup, we can see that now we are translating a little bit. One other cool thing that I wanted to show you is you can go on the GLSL parameters here and use the input extend mode parameter, change that to repeat or to mirror, and that will change what happens uh, in the wrapping. So if we use mirror, then we get a nice smooth image with this distortion. And we can just take it one step further by saying maybe U wave will make it a VEC2, and the first one can be the scale, which will be 10. The second can be the amplitude. So I'll come back here. Uniform floats, or sorry, uniform vec2. U wave. And we can multiply here by u wave dot x times u wave dot y. And now I can change my parameters here. We have different ways to affect the image. Of course, if I translate faster, this all translates faster. Maybe I'll just leave it as abs time dot seconds. And so now you can see with, what did I tell you? Okay, 54 lines, but this is all really counts as one. So 
if I make this a little bit less readable, but take up less lines, there you go, under 50 lines of code. Uh, and that even includes all the uniforms you created. So hopefully this goes to illustrate a little bit of the power of GLSL. I love dithering. It's an effect that I commonly use uh, in post. And now you can achieve that the same way. So hopefully you enjoy this tutorial and I'll catch you next time on the HQ. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.